you are listening to the Foamy Heads Podcast, where we discuss craft beer and anything else that accompanies a glass. It is the Foamy Heads back on the mics today with Mitch and Rich with our special guests joining us in just a few moments. Whether this is your first happy hour with us or you've decided to come back for another round, grab a brew, sit back, relax. Follow us on our social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at the Foamy Heads. Then head over to our website, www.thefoamyheads.com to check out all things Foamy. While you're there, hit the beer blog to see our thoughts on some of the less available brews that Mitch and Rich have been drinking lately. You can also find all of our episodes archived on the website as well. If we don't broadcast to your favorite podcast app, hit the contact page and let us know. Mitch. Yes. What's up, man? Not much. We'll uh, hanging out for a little bit. Yeah, man. Um, I'm excited for the beers that we've already got poured. Yeah. What do you think so far of the space? I love the space, man. It's a uh, it's very unique compared to all the other breweries we've been to. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of people that like to joke about you know, breweries are kind of set up the same way, right? These new, bre- you see those memes around where it's like the, the hot new restaurant or the hot new brewery in town. It's got like the, you know, the reclaimed wood with the lights, you know, kind of hanging yeah. from the bottom and stuff like that. And, um, you know, the, the bartenders are, you know, got the whispery, the, the whiskery mustaches that kind of wire <laughs> out or whatever. This place is, this place definitely kind of goes against all that. It's refreshing to see someplace different uh, with a different theme. Uh, but we're actually hanging at Big Trouble Brewing Company today, mm-hmm. based out of Gallatin, Tennessee, and it's got a a very unique style, definitely based off the movie Big Trouble in Little China. But I love just like the the '80s aspect of this place. It's got popping colors. It's got um, just the the aesthetics of the place overall in general. It's just a fun place to be. Everything kind of pops out. Lots of memorabilia and uh, all sorts of stuff wherever you sit down at the bar. Got lots of things to reflect on from your past that's where we're (laughs) the older ones of us anyway (laughs) yeah we're probably going to be a little a little old we've got i just we've got some uh interns at work that don't understand anything about even the 90s and every time i just come around those people Mm. and i'll mention something because i'm in it right yeah just that stuff even just progresses even faster than the rest of the world does so talking to these people and you bring up something even from the 90s i don't know what that is i've never even heard of a floppy disk before or something like that so being able to throw back to the 90s or even the 80s you know when you're just around all of that new that new stuff you know mm-hmm. it's always good to just come back and just relax and chill and sometime in your generation yeah and that's kind of the vibe i'm getting today Definitely. I love the posters, man. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of who we're talking today, so we're talking with Josiah, who's the owner of Big Trouble Brewing Company. Man, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thanks, Thanks. for coming out. Yeah, this is a good time. Um, Gallatin, Tennessee. So from the home base of Hendersonville slash Murfreesboro, mm. um, depending on whether you're talking to me or Mitch, it's a, it's a little bit of a drive, but not my first time in Gallatin. I mean, we've been out here quite a few times, but um this place is relatively new soft opening right a couple weeks ago yeah uh, a couple weeks back and we just did our opening last night so last night will be day two nice yeah we're sitting here too yeah we're, we're sitting early. here yeah. early customers <laughs> yeah yeah uh hey if you don't mind you want to tell us a little bit about yourself yeah kind of how you um, came up into this space sure uh my name is josiah i grew up mostly in middle tennessee i think i moved here in 01 in uh maybe eighth grade, ninth, something like that. And been in and out, but I kind of stayed here. Uh, I did some time in the military, so I would go, leave for training or schools, but uh, lived in Inglewood, East Nashville area for a while. And then I had to leave for a deployment and we had two kids at the time starting to outgrow the house. And my wife has family up here. So we, we landed up here. So we've been here for about three years in Gallatin, but I grew up in Hendersonville, went high school down there so not too far it's one town south Mm. for those who don't know (laughs) context uh try to be thoughtful of others (laughs) there you go (laughs) um but yeah and i i always wanted to do a brewery um i mean who doesn't Mm. you know it's fun but i always thought it'd be something i do much later in life like you know once i retire you know maybe in my late 50s or 60s 
I'll finally have my life together and figure it out. <laughs> um, but actually on that, on that deployment, uh, we lost a couple guys, uh, a couple friends of mine were killed and I just came back from that realizing that man, life is short mm, and yeah, I was just kind of tomorrow's not necessarily guaranteed. Right. So I was like, screw it. When I get back, I'm pulling the trigger. And that was kind of the proximate cause of all of this in, in a way, in a very real way for me. Mm. Um, so I got back and then we, I started putting feelers out with the city, like letting them know what I wanted to do. And a guy from the city let me know, he said, Hey, there's a building, you know, near the square. There's a square in Gallatin. It's like a historic square. It's got a bunch of old buildings and pretty cool restaurants and little boutique shops. So this is where we are is like a quarter or an eighth of a mile. Just not even. Think, that yeah, far. It's, yeah, it's, it's you can close. throw a rock. Well, <laughs> some of you could throw a rock and hit it. Uh, it's, it's yeah, it, it's pretty close. So anyway, it's right on the square. It's an old flower shop. It's about 3000 square feet and um, had a walk in cooler already. So that was pretty dope. That's one, right. less, one less thing to worry about. Um, so yeah, I got the space in the end of 19. So I think it was like September of 19. And then life <laughs> happened. Yeah. Uh, 2020 COVID, happened, yeah. right? And yeah. I mean, just there was, I mean, a lot of it was external circumstances. Some of it is just naivety, ignorance, and self-inflicted wounds of just not knowing what you don't know and uh, trying to stumble your way through it with like codes departments mm. and inspections. And but basically between me a friend or two and my dad helped a lot did all the build out myself like walls ceiling floor all the lights uh a lot of the plumbing you know it, there was quite a bit that had to go into it um but the only way i could do it was to do it myself yeah. <laughs> um pieced all the brewing equipment together from like yeah. uh some things in northern california somewhere in colorado some i found here in middle tennessee just kind of beg, steal, and borrow to get the system together. So get everything here. You're paying freight from all over the world. <laughs> Stuff's coming at different times, mm. putting together hoses, finding clients, you know, just everything. And then um, getting it all together took took some time, both for like the aesthetics and just the building and also the brewing system. So that finally started coming together earlier this year. And then it was like the codes and inspection rodeo for a while trying to get make everybody happy who right. matters so they can sign your little piece of paper and uh, tell you you can open up so uh that always, happened about a month a ago or a month and a half ago we finally got you know all those uh green arrows i guess and mm. so we're just now getting the point where we're trading beer for money and hanging out so <laughs> bartering uh, yeah yes. <laughs> we'll accept yeah, american currency for beer yep yeah so yeah we just wanted to do a fun little uh we brew it all here, sell it here. I mean, distribution might be a thing in the future, but right now it's just, it's a brew pub. Tap house room. only. Yeah. yeah. Um, at least until I can fill up the rest of my taps. And then once I have some extras, mm. you know, we'll fill that out and maybe get some local accounts here. But heck yeah. Yeah. That sounds great. I know, you know, it's, it's definitely not expected to be able to find, you know, your beer 20 miles away at this point in time. You know, you open up shop, just kind of make sure you can self-sustain first. Yeah. And then being able to kind of get out there. Um, I've got a beer sitting in front of me actually right now. I yes. don't know if it's okay. It's still cold. That's good. I want to, I want to, I want to drink it. I want to, so we're drinking, um, a few different beers today mm -hmm. of their offerings, but we're looking at a red ale, right? Yep. An Irish red. Yes. So it's at, uh, let's see. 4.5% ABV touch a nugget and crystal. Cheers. 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 Mm. I like the sweetness on the end. Mm -hmm. It's not um, not sugary sweetness though. It's something else. A nugget and crystal. I don't. <clears throat> it's got a nice nose on it too. Yeah. This is not. I. This tastes way different from your regular Killian's Irish Red that you know people go and pick up at you know a, a Publix or a Kroger or something like that. This actually this has substance to it. You know, you're not just drinking sugar water. This thing has a couple of different flavors on this. Um, was this one of the first beers you started brewing or was this kind of more I mean, everything I have right now is one of the first. This is a good point. <laughs> so good point. this, I, well, let's see. Glad I brought the clipboards out. Uh, this was batch five here. Ah. So it's the fifth time I use that system. First batch didn't make it. So oh. RIP. Mm. <laughs> that blonde is, uh, now in the city sewer somewhere. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that sweetness, uh, 
this called for like it's a seven barrel system and that's about uh depending on the gravity you're going for like three to four hundred pounds of grain mm -hmm. is what you know we're using for a seven barrel batch again depending on the style and all that but um i was short a bag of maris otter which is one of the grains i needed for this and this called for like 13 pounds of a honey malt so i substituted uh basically 50 pounds of maris otter for that honey malt for the honey malt and that might be yeah. some of that sweetness in there which i i think it i enjoyed how it turned out yeah. and I, if i when i do make it again i'll probably just make my oops recipe and keep that thing going um i think it's killer it's been a while since i've i've had a red irish red so it, mm -hmm. yeah it's not a super popular style these mm. days um I don't know. I mean, I mean, I love, I love all beers. It just depends Same. on like the weather or the season, my mood, but I'll drink anything. I mean, including Bud Lights. I have no, mm -hmm. I'm not a proud man. I'm just, I'm a man, you know, and I like what I like. Carbonated uh, water. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, we'll take reds. It. Yeah. There, I actually heard about, I don't know if this is true, but I heard Killian's is actually not a red, an Irish red. It's just huh. like, it's a lager <clears throat> made in, I mean, they market it as an Irish. They market it somebody as, told yeah. me, I don't remember who it was. Someone came in here the other day and they had this spiel about it. Um, <laughs> But I was like, oh, I need to look into that. So now yeah. I'm just now I'm fake curious. news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, Man. but I, I, I love it, dude. Uh, that sweetness really, I think, elevates this Irish red. So uh, I'll probably get a full pint of this later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been again, we've only been open to the public. Soft open was like five days and we did yesterday. But people really seem to like this one, which I think is great. I mean, it's not like a recipe I have done dozens of times mm -hmm. and i've again going from a home brewer at like yeah. a five or ten gallon mm. scale then you move to seven barrels which is like 220 ish gallons um in theory it's like oh yeah just multiply, multiply by a by factor <laughs> you know and but is it not like that i mean it is to some extent at, right? yeah but there's just home brewing and pub brewing like this <clears throat> it's the same thing like the difference is volume mm. so because you have an increase in volume like a five gallon batch you can just bear hug it and like put it in an ice bath to chill it mm -hmm. you can't do that with 200 gallons nope. you have to use temperature controlled fermentation so you have to have jacketed fermenters so you have to have a glycol chiller but it's this you're doing the same thing mm. and same thing with a pump like you for a five gallon batch you can just pick it up dump a little out or use a siphon to yep. gravity um but you can't do that with these so you have to get pumps which means you need hoses and uh, valves and fittings i mean it's not rocket surgery right it's just like home brewing except <laughs> you have to use a few different tools to achieve the same thing you're doing but mm. the, i mean people don't make beer people make sugar water yeast makes beer and it's you're just setting the conditions but to set those conditions you have to use a little more equipment mm. than you do at a small batch that's why i like at it i like to dumb things down to to be like yes i can do this you know yeah. it's the same yes. thing yeah. <laughs> just on a but, much uh, larger scale yeah but uh -huh. the another issue is again especially at a new place like this like you mess up you just wasted 500 pounds of grain or and a brick of yeast and mm. you know how many pounds of hops and all the water and all the btus you used to heat the water so um the stakes are a little higher which kind of makes you like double and triple check everything yep. to make sure you don't mess up good accountability uh, but <laughs> that's the other difference uh home brewing 60 bucks right, right. You lose, you yeah lose a batch a five gallon batch you're like ah 70 bucks so, man, i gotta clean but... these bottles now yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest trouble with home brewing is making sure your bottles are clean before yeah. you know you throw the the, the clamper on top. Yeah. I, I remember doing. I think all it's that. the same. It's similar at this scale. It's, I mean, I think brewing is like cooking. Mm. Anybody can follow directions. You got a recipe, <clears throat> you got directions, you just follow it. But you have to know how to use your stove, use your microwave, use your whatever, like use your mixer. If you don't know how to use your tools, then recipe is not going to help you. But and brewing, I think sanitation obviously is mm -hmm. like super important because yeah. you have this feast of sugar for any microbe that is hungry, which yeah. is all of them. So whether it's wild yeast or some fungus or um, uh, bacteria, you get a little bit in there and it's just feeding frenzy. So that's, I'm always super, I mean, everybody who makes beer has to be very like cognizant about because mm. it just sits there for right. weeks or months. And if it's not clean, something's gonna show up that's not gonna Ugh. taste or smell good everybody so. just always assumes that like brewing beer at least you know it's all oh, brewing beer is so exciting like yeah it is you get to see the final result right and then when you're making it it's fun 
but more than half the time it's just sitting somewhere. And as you kind of mentioned before we started recording today, it's like you want to go back there, you just want to sit and look at it and yeah. be like, yeah, let's go. But dry hop faster. It doesn't move <laughs> faster just because you're sitting there and looking at it. It's going to do what it's going to do. It's going to take the same amount of time regardless of whether or not you're looking yeah. at it. It's like, let's have a mustache drawing contest. Ready, go. Yeah. And then you just like <laughs> squint and like, <laughs> like, ah, it doesn't help. You just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but time. that red was killer, man. I really liked, I liked it. It. It, was, it was super. Ironically, it's hot outside and I could still drink that even though it's hot outside red ales i kind of think that they're a little bit heavier i'd almost want it to be a little bit cooler this has a refreshing aftertaste to it that still you could drink even though it's 90 degrees outside mitch yeah it still slaps the palate a little bit being a rye but it's crisp and i mean it i, I drink several of these in a row <laughs> this is good i really I like i may or may one. not order another one yeah. once this place opens <laughs> yes for sure yeah by the way pool sweet poolside fm yeah great addition <laughs> yeah dude it's, it's such a fun vibe we have a well don't sue me pool suite but <laughs> yeah, uh that's true <laughs> they it's a website that has they just loop videos from the 80s and 90s a lot of them are like old ads um killer. and they they will pair it with music because basically they have a website and it's an interactive like old school apple os like mm -hmm. an old operating system and it's uh so they have a video player that plays these old ads and old like home video clips um, and then they have a music player on there as well that links to their SoundCloud, but it's just a cool, it's a it fun is. vibe, man. So it's we have awesome. a, we have it up here behind the bar just for people to ask questions about. We don't have any like TVs for sports or anything. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get away from that, but yeah, um, that's what we have in lieu here. I dig it. Yeah. I, I I've got a TV at home. I'm trying to purpose for the same thing just to have <laughs> in on the background because it's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, and somehow the music usually always pairs great with what yeah. they've got going on. So, um, gotta have the tunes. Yes, I, I guess I'm ready for the next. Yeah, four, absolutely. Man. Finish right, that red ale. That was killer. Moving towards the next one, what are we thinking, Mitch? Let's see. actually maybe we should ask Josiah. Maybe he'd be the oh, one yeah. to tell us what we want to have. Uh, let's see. So we went with red. Um, should we either the blonde, the blood orange blonde or the brown ale next one of those two yeah that's what i'm thinking okay maybe the brown ale brown ale uh, that's the one i was telling you about ah, a little bit a little, uh, <laughs> document brown ale science made with a billion pounds of maris otter grain oh nugget and idaho <laughs> hops science yes <laughs> by the way those tap handles fantastic yeah i'm a big fan i like those The uh, there's a few little action figures around the bar too. Those are the empty ones. <laughs> <laughs> got it. That makes sense. And then we've got a oh, what was his name from Big Trouble? A little China over on the glassware. Uh man, I know it. I'm struggling with the name, but Lopan. Lopan, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That came out nice. Yeah. What did I not see? Was there a glass in there beforehand? There it is. <laughs> Two thirds foam. Well. Whatever, we'll air the dirty laundry for the public. Um, <laughs> I was kegging this brown today. So I have four serving tanks in a walk-in cooler, and they're all full right now. So I can serve I serve beer directly from those to the taps, but I have other beers I need to uh, serve, but I, that's, I carbonate in those tanks. So mm. I have to empty them in order to move, clean them and put a new beer in. So I have a pale ale I'm trying to put on tomorrow. So I was kegging this one today, but I think uh, during that process this specific keg became over carbonated mm. so when i was pouring it out of the tap it was just like a lot of foam mm -hmm. so i've been releasing pressure from the keg then allowing the dissolved co2 that's in the beer to replace what i just evacuated in the headspace so i guess got lucky and these are pouring okay now but sweet so another <laughs> one of those things you're just like crap like why is this happening right now before this podcast yeah but, uh yeah. yeah i guess that's it's it'll cut the mustard today so there you go. hell yeah give it a shot mitch yeah and the Doc Brown mm -hmm. moniker is from uh, Doc Brown on Back to the Future. So yeah. yes, didn't want that to be lost on your illustrious listeners. No, yeah, thank you for saying it. Yeah, it, it like <laughs> went over my head, even though I understood the reference. <laughs> it's when I'm in a space, I get the references, but I I need to speak up on them. Well, yeah. you know, looking at the description up there, the first word literally yes. says science. Yeah. You know, that's kind of. <laughs> 
Doc Brown's thing, you know, yeah. science made with a billion Marty. pounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 1.21 gigawatts. Who's the president? <laughs> Ronald Reagan? The actor? The actor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. I noticed that immediately as soon as I saw it. Uh, not overly sweet. No. It's really tasty. It's got a little nuttiness to it. Uh-huh. Idaho hops, uh, mm. 4.5% easy drinker. Mm-hmm. Not, um, you know, sometimes you can get brown ales, especially if you get into the imperial brown ales, where they're just not only overly boozy, but they're also um, really, really sweet. And it's just kind of like it's a one and done or whatever. This is more refreshing. You can kind of pound a few of these, probably because of the 4.5%, but it's also not only just because it's lower than some of those imperial browns that you find, but it's also. Um, not overly sugary either. So brown ales sometimes can lean towards the too too sugary end of things, and mm-hmm. I don't necessarily go for that. This is tasty. Yes, you know it's you can throw it back. We're drinking what four or five ounce pours right now, I think, mm-hmm. out of these, and it's going down really easily. Mm. Doc Emmett Brown Ale. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Got to do the homage to the to our forefathers. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I wish I had a DeLorean myself, but man, oh. Uh, I don't want to screw it. Go ahead. Um, so I have a mural on the side of this building. You ah. guys probably saw when you yep. pulled in. Yes. I had another mural planned and artists made it. It featured a DeLorean mm. um, in the middle. And it was like one of those eighties, like uh futurescapes where it's like, either, like a, a grid that mm. goes to a sunset and the grid is like black and like neon. You know what I'm talking about? It has yeah. like a perspective kind of, Kind of like a narrow wave, yes, exactly. wave kind of thing. So yeah. that it was that with the DeLorean. And then there was the character from Big Trouble Little China, Aww. Jack Burton, holding a beer uh, in yes. like a stance. That's perfect. And I agree. It is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and I bring it. So in, in this city, we have an arts council. Mm. So you have to submit murals to the arts council. And the feedback I got was it's repulsive oh. and disgusting. So, that, so the uh, <laughs> mural did not go to the city. So the city council actually approves it or, mm-hmm. or not. They vote on them. So uh, anyway, That's this did not get a yes vote. And we had to go back to the literal drawing board. And a guy named Brian Deese, uh, he actually lives up here. But he's, he does a lot of murals in Nashville. He, like mm-hmm. in East Nashville, he did. There's that one of uh, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. Oh, like yeah. I think it's near that Cobra bar mm-hmm. on Gallatin Pike. Um, and he does Pickers Vodka and he just did the Nashville Sound Stadium. He does all, but he lives here and he's huh. like, dude, I've been wanting to paint that wall for years because he drives by it every day. Oh, that's so killer. He did a great job and I, and, um, I was like, all right, let's do something else. So what's on there now is just more of like a design. It mm-hmm. doesn't really feature a character or a awesome car, but yeah. it's, uh, it's kind of like a trapper keeper meets some graffiti with mm-hmm. some poke. I mean, it's pretty, it's, it's fun. Got a lot of good feedback on that too, but the original one was, uh, little more audacious and uh <laughs> but you know i mean maybe got, in the future yeah guys. yeah indoor mural maybe yeah well we got one over there i don't mm-hmm. know if you guys saw it but um a, a good buddy of mine uh cody russell he there's a right a, on the other like side a portrait yeah on the other yeah. side of that wall it's a character from the film also they're trying little china it's mm-hmm. her gracie law in this like chinese uh geisha like wedding attire or something uh, from the movie um anyway it's he did a really good job on that it took him took him a minute man i was here I, I pretty much live here so he was he would always just come in whenever and paint you know a few colors and let it dry come back the next day same thing with that i mean mm. the approval process was several months oh, man. and then the actual painting process was a couple months too because i've never seen him you know you see like on snapchat or instagram or whatever like it's just those like uh the fast forward pace. Yeah. 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 What, what's that time lapse? Like time a time lapse thing. Yeah. You're like, oh, that looks easy. Like that took like <laughs> 20 seconds. I almost had enough attention to watch the whole thing before I skipped it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, it's, it's a lot of work, a lot mm. of paint, a lot of measuring, a lot of stenciling, a lot of grit. Like I got a lot of respect for what those guys do. It's uh, it was cool to see like just the process and yeah, yeah he did a great job. So those timeline videos are very <sighs> deceiving. Yeah. How do we, even, oh yeah, we were talking about. DeLoreans. Yes. There, I was yeah. like, well, how did we get there? But again, we travel yeah. through time yeah. a little bit. Yes. Ooh. Right. <laughs> oh. Oh. Mm. That's smooth. Yeah. It's actually not a super complex beer to make. It's for a seven barrel. It's only got 24 ounces total of hops. 
Um, 24 six, ounces? Yeah it's, yeah, it's got a pound of Idaho okay. and a half a pound of nugget, which is virtually, at that scale, it's very low in hops. Yeah. Um, whereas that red had, had a bit more. IPA has a ton more. Uh, <laughs> I mean, naturally. <laughs> but it's it's Maris Otter. That's why I put it up there. It's, uh, it's 260 pounds. It's about 90% of the grain bill up there is the the Maris Otter uh, grain, which is like a dark, that's where you get all the color from. Yeah. It's a very dark grain and there's some Munich Vienna and then white wheat. Uh, but those are like less than 10% of the total. So Small pieces. Interesting. Yeah. But, uh, got a little bit of a dry finish kind of at the end or mm -hmm. just kind of lifts right at the end. It makes you go, wasn't quite sure if I had a whole sip, so I had to go and drink another sip. Yeah. And yeah. before I knew it, it was gone. <laughs> got to make sure, you know, <laughs> got to make sure you can see the bottom of the glass. Yeah. It, man. So far, I, I'm knocked out by the beers you got here, man. Yeah, thank you. You know what you're doing. What's next? Well, what do you think? Good Mitch? question. I guess we'll. Uh, is it fair to say the blood orange is good to go next before the IPA, or should we follow that by? I don't know. I think you're asking the wrong guy, man. <laughs> to me, <laughs> beer is beer. I either like something or I don't, yeah. and. Uh, as a mood, I don't know. I say, yeah, let's do the blood orange blonde. I actually okay. just put that one on yesterday. Okay. So that was in a fermenter yesterday morning. Uh, <clears throat> carved it in the afternoon or carved it late in the morning. So it's a new one. Okay. Um, Sweet. Just, just came out yesterday. We'll try it out. I don't, Mitch, I don't know if I've ever had blood orange in a blonde before. Oh, yeah. Me neither. Most um, of the times I have blood oranges is either in, well, probably in an IPA. Yeah. Yeah. Blood orange IPA. And so you get that. It's like Your blood orange, and yeah, it's it's grapefruity, but at the same time, it it gets some of the the sweetness characters of blood orange, whatever is in there, you mm -hmm. know, because it is grapefruity. You're right; it's kind of more of a sour or tart. I'll go with yeah, yeah, tart. But any of the sweetness is is overpowered by the hops that you would get in an IPA. So oftentimes, when you have a blood orange IPA, mm. it's like hoppy and very, very, very grapefruity, very tart. It's not necessarily. So I'm very interested in trying this because a Blondale, you know, historically is it's a lighter beer. Um, it, it, it kind of gives way to the flavors that the adjuncts that you put into it because it's a blonde ale. It's right. literally, it's literally just a, it's a lighter flavored beer. So putting, putting blood orange in this thing, I'm very curious. Let's see. It's a light ale, single hopped, dry hopped with Williamette, lemongrass, and blood orange vibes. Vibes. <laughs> yeah. Gotta I like it. Up there. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Actually, it's funny you said that. With a Z. I put a, uh, I said, I have another buddy, he, he does Briar Scratch Brewing, yeah. and he was up here yesterday, and I was telling him about this beer, and I said, William Et, and he's like, you know you're saying that wrong, right? And I'm like, no, <laughs> well, I'm just reading it, it's William with an Et, yeah. and he's like, it's, it's Willamette, cool. and I'm like, whatever, man. Sure. So, <laughs> is it really? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, with you? <laughs> I have no idea. Okay. I mean, I trust him. He's a very good dude, and he's been very helpful. Let me borrow his keg washer. Well, I'm at. Yeah. I've well, never heard know. it been called that before. But. I have to watch some YouTube videos and see how everybody else says <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, same. Uh, well, I'm at. Everybody else calls it William Met. <laughs> I can guarantee you that. <laughs> I mean, there is a little bit more power with the yeah. way he said the. Well, I'm at. Well, yeah. I'm at. Maybe that's just like a Tennessee, Kentucky way. Maybe. Of it. Like moonshiners call it. Well, I'm at. Yeah. But yeah, it's a single hop. So it was lighter hops in the boil. Mm -hmm. And then I dry hopped it, I think, with. Uh, four pounds in the dry hop, which oh. for a, for a blonde, it's a little aggressive on the hops. Uh, but now I'm interested. I was just giving mm -hmm. it a shot, you know, like see what happens. I've never done a single hop beer, I don't think ever. Really? Yeah. And I was mm. this. Uh, they smell good, so I was like, they maybe maybe they're gonna taste good. Yeah. So. <laughs> that pauses everyone drinking. Yes. Oh, see, man. I should co-host with you guys. That's good. Definitely <laughs> would definitely love that. That would be fun. You get to drink someone else's beer too. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Man, that's tasty. A little bit of blood orange. I, yeah. I dig it. Yeah. It's, it's not, not tint of a hint. Yeah, it's not a lot. That's good. Oh I can uh, I can chew on it a little. <clears throat> What's I, that at the end? Grainy kind of Yeah, grainy. Uh, grainy or like weedy? Weedy is a good word. Yeah, kind of it reminds me of a uh, wheat taste. Maybe but what does that mean to uh a brewer i don't know <laughs> but I, I'm, it tastes good yeah i think i don't because i, I kind of thought that too when i tried it and i don't know if i'm just being reminded of mm. blue moon because oh, the yeah. only orange beer or like what i it's one of the beers i kind of grew up on was mm. blue moons 
back when I thought Blue Moon was a craft, craft beer. beer. <laughs> like when I was just in college, I'm like, yeah, I don't drink Bud Light, just Blue Moon's craft beer. Uh, you, were them, you were one of them fancy beer oh, drinkers yeah, dude. in college. Uh, in college, I was drinking uh, Guinness and Blue Moon <laughs> and all the craft stuff. It was awesome. Yeah. Uh, but so it reminds me of that a little bit. It's not a wheat beer. There's no wheat in it at all. Mm. But I think for me, it's, I just transports me back to drinking Blue Moons mm -hmm. because I taste a little bit of that orange and it's like, oh, maybe it, this is what wheat tastes like. Mm. <laughs> it really has nothing to do with it. So I don't know. But, I, don't, um, I don't know much about lemongrass flavor, mm. but I don't, I, I can't help but wonder if that to me, because you said there's, I mean, that little bit of wheat kind of taste at the end. I don't know if that's lemongrass or if lemongrass is kind of more of like a citrusy flavor. I don't, I don't know enough about it. But there's something at the end that almost tastes like a wheat beer to yeah. me. So the the first part of the beer, mm. real crisp, real you know, real easy drinking, and then the middle part, you kind of get a little bit of that blood orange. But then at the end, and then hops, I get hops in the middle as well. But then right at the end, there's that there's almost a little bit of a I don't want to say yeast. It's more of a wheat flavor. Yeah. Um, that kind of finishes off. So it starts super easy drinking, and then it kind of finishes off a little weedy. It's definitely got citrus twang to mm -hmm. it. And Good word. I, I really enjoy that uh, twist at the end with this one. Josiah's probably looking at me like, what the fuck's this dude talking about? <laughs> dude, you know more than me. I, uh, again, I either like it or I don't. Like, uh, I was listening to y'all's podcast the other week, and uh, just listening to you guys review these beers. I'm like, man, like even just now, and you're like, at the beginning, it's this, and in the middle, it's this, and at the end, I'm like, man, you have a good memory. Like, <laughs> I don't even remember that sip, which was like two seconds of my life. I can't even describe that. Like, it's just, I don't know. I don't, it's hard for me to like look at things at that level of detail sometimes. It's like, yeah, it's good. Or like, nah, it's mm. garbage. I can't do it. And you like what you as like. As a brewer or brewery owner, like, I probably need to get better at tasting <clears throat> beers. Um, but I don't know. I, cause I, yeah, I have like a binary scale. Like, yeah, nah. <laughs> I mean, it's working for you so far. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we've only had three. So <laughs> at the end of the day, is, you know, are people, are people going to enjoy this beer? And so far, the answer is yes. And really, at the end of the day, that's all that matters. You know, it's, yeah. you know, somebody starts dissecting a beard doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be every that's not your target audience that walks into a place like this it's as people want to have a good time they just want to drink beer and and relax and kind of enjoy some nostalgia and that's ultimately what you want to go for yeah exactly i mean this place is for locals like mm -hmm. just period like it's just a neighborhood i mean I, I honestly look at it as a cafe like or a bakery like we just we make stuff here and we sell it to the community and uh, it takes a little pressure off to think about it that way but the brewery culture is just so crazy because there's so many aspects and different like styles of brewery you get everything from like budweiser to like big regionals like mm -hmm. yazoo or wiseacre and like and then you got little guys like me and you got nanos that are just mm. selling stuff to restaurant like there's everything like the ecosystem it's like evolution you know like everything evolves to find its little niche right and <laughs> the niche that i was trying to fill is just like local neighborhood watering hole you know mm. and um so we'll see, see how it works. I mean, we're, I'm so early on. I mean, I'm not in a way, like I said, it's been a couple of years of working on it, but in terms of being open right. and like putting all this work to the test, like I'm, I'm still not counting my, what's that phrase? Don't count your chickens before they, before hatch. they hatch. Yeah. So yes. I'm just looking at my eggs being like, please hatch, please hatch. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm waiting for some sort of like military term to come out of his mouth. Like maybe there's got to be some sort of like saying I, that I can... try to keep those like <laughs> in a bottle, you know, yes. like the Marines probably don't use don't count your chickens before they hatch. Yeah. <laughs> Try to keep it PG. You know, right, my mom right. might listen. And, they you understand know, that. Me. So. <laughs> Man, I tried to slow down on this one and I couldn't. I, I, I just went through it. Yeah. <laughs> You finished first on your uh, on your beer. I did. Winner. I did. It, it was fantastic. That one, I, I'm saying it three times in a row. It's like I want a full pint of yeah. this. And man, well, I'm sure he'll sell you. We saw him in pints, pints as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, that was awesome. Good. Um, I'm glad you liked it, man. I, I appreciate it. Uh, like I said, it's that's not a crazy one to make either. I mean, there's nothing. The blood orange is, I mean, it's it's a blonde with uh, essentially a blood orange extract in mm -hmm. it, and you dose it like an ounce per barrel. So it's like this fifty dollar like vial of blood orange like spirit, super you know, concentrated. Like, yeah. And so you, I just brewed it as a blonde, fermented it as a blonde, 
out of the dry hops as a blonde. And then when I transferred in the serving tank that I transferred into, you add the extract and pray for the best. And so as that beer transfers in, it all kind of mixes together and you carb it, it agitates the beer a little bit. So mm. in theory, that's, you know, causing a little bit of movement in there. And then the flavor from the blood orange will disseminate in the beer. I'd never yeah. done an extract ever before, except like my first home brew, which, you know, you buy just liquid malt extract, yeah. like, you know, before you go all grain. Mm. Um, so this was, yeah, this was just a, a blood orange extract and a blonde. And it's not, I didn't know if it would be too much or too little. Again, another leap of faith. You're just mm. like, do a Hail Mary and hope <laughs> for the best. Um, but I, again, it just yesterday, mm. like was made to the public, like made as a product that was finished. So it's new to me too. I've only had like, <clears throat> well, I've had like a pint or two of it. <laughs> I, to pull gravity readings, uh, which is how you measure basically the dissolved sugar in the beer. You do it along the process as the beer mm -hmm. ferments. And I have these big hydrometers and you have to pour 500 milliliters in order to um, get the hydrometer to like float. Uh, so that's about a pint of beer. So like every day I'm pouring a full pint in this <laughs> cylinder and it, you know, it's not cold, it's not carbonated yet. And you're just kind of tasting along the way. Not that you can really do anything if it doesn't taste good, but you're just like, <laughs> you measure the gravity. I'm like, I'm not going to waste this. It took right. me a long time to make this. Right. So, um, so I've had it along the way just as a blonde mm. and then, but carbonated cold and with the uh, fruit was just, well, just kind of kicked so. it up a notch. Yeah. So I was, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah. Um, this is that That's spinal hot. tap version. You turned it to 11 on the, the <laughs> one. It's spinal tap. That blood orange was perfect. Goes to 11. Yeah, <laughs> to 11. Good reference. <laughs> but dang, we're, I'm enjoying this. The, yeah. Every single one, man. So good. good. I'm glad. Glad to hear that. IPA next, Mitch? I suppose. Okay. Let's do it. Red, brown, blonde, IPA. Yeah. Or do we want to do seltzer first? Yeah, Let's do IPA. IPA? The seltzers yeah, are... Uh, They'll help our palates out. <laughs> It'll do something to our palates. So seltzers are kind of still a new thing to me. Yeah. You know, it's been an ever-growing craze mm -hmm. in craft beer, the whole community itself. So, and it brings in a lot of different people too. Yep. So you can, uh, for, I wonder, I, I still have yet to meet somebody that's been like, I started with seltzers and found my way into craft beer, mm. but I'm sure that's going to happen in time. Yeah, but you haven't met them yet. Not yet. No. I mean, my journey was... Uh, St. Bernardus. <laughs> you went you I went big in the from beginning. From Belgian. And yeah. then I dove into the American craft uh -huh. beer scene, you know. But I was, you know, sipping on high life and stuff before that. So no shame. No, I mean it, we all start somewhere. I know the back when <laughs> back in the college days when well, even even not just college days, but we've referenced it before. It's one of the older I don't mm. know if we ever released it. I guess we did we release the uh cheap beer recording. Oh yeah, yeah. That it's, we did. Uh, it's below ten. Yeah. Our, uh, definitely Spotify. uh uh, King Cobra, yeah, uh, Bud Ice, and we basically just bought all the gas station cheap beers that we could find. Colt, you know, Colt Forty Five, a bunch of Forties, yeah. <laughs> you know, whether you're blind tasting them or whether you're drinking them, just trying to stomach them, yeah. like you know. I don't the only know. one I really did not like, and I don't know if it's just because I've drank so many beers with flavor, is Bud Ice. I couldn't. <laughs> That was, Ice like, beers are a whole category in themselves. Man. You just take, you basically take the frozen water yeah. that is Budweiser, right? And then you just, you just scrape off the ice at the top and you just super condense it into just higher alcohol yeah. and just cheap beer. It's a good idea on paper. Oh yeah. They, they, <laughs> Ice beers definitely have their place and I'm sure Bud Ice has its place too. Mm -hmm. I mean, they keep making them. So somebody's buying them. Somebody's right. buying them. Yeah. Um, IPA. Yeah. Sitting in front of us. Let's Look, see. Mom, I did it, IPA, the first beer that worked. <laughs> what's behind that? Uh, what's behind that is five barrels of a blonde. That was the first beer that didn't work. Ah. Uh, that is the one in the sewer that I was telling you guys about. Yep. Mm. So that batch, it was the first beer I made on this system. Again, this system I kind of cobbled together and uh, made it work. Um, I was telling you guys before we started the podcast that I got these four fermenters from a brewery in, in Northern California. They're eight barrel fermenters, um, but they were just like, they didn't have any US or metric fittings on them. They were all some strange thread and I couldn't get anything to like screw into them or talk to them or like just nothing. It, it was super frustrating. And I have four of them and they're all like different. They're the same product, but they, they had been 
customized before. And (laughs) so like I spent uh, months like trying to find, I finally found they're called like BSPP and BSPT fittings, British straight pipe thread and British straight pipe parallel. And (laughs) like after ordering like, like just every website I can find, like trying to find the right size plugs or the right size, like sample valve. And like, you'd order one. It didn't fit. You send it back, try to get a new one. And meanwhile, a week goes by, you're waiting. Yep. It's like, I just need these freaking things to work. So, <laughs> uh, had to literally, literally beating my head on these things for like months. I finally called a welder. I'm like, dude, just come here and chop off everything that's sticking out of the cylinder and weld on tri clamps. Like I can't <laughs> put American <laughs> parts yeah. on that. Dish. America. Uh, <laughs> All right. So I don't know how I got on that tangent. Sorry, but um, the first beer that yeah. Worked. So anyway, piecing the system together, there's no manual, you mm-hmm. know. So the first brew, like I had the heat exchanger, like not totally hooked up the right way, and like some valves weren't as airtight as I thought they were. Just everything. I was here. I started at like 6 p.m. I was here till 4 a.m. Wow. And like two hours later, I'm sitting at my kid's soccer game, like drinking a monster, trying to stay awake, <laughs> oh, yeah. just. I, I just finished, like I couldn't get the beer to cool in the fermenter. So I didn't know if the yeast was going to make just everything. God. And I'm sitting there like, I just bet the entire farm on being able to make beer <laughs> and I can't make a beer. <laughs> I was like so depressed and like just defeated. And I came back the next morning, cleaned up the mess uh, and just got back after it. You know, like I'm like, well, I can't, there's no way out of this, but forward. Like the, you can't, you can't quit. You just got to yeah. figure it out. So, um, put my big boy shorts on and uh, I tried this IPA recipe. I'm glad I did this one second because IPAs, mm. they cost a little more to make because yeah, yeah. there's tons of hops in them. Um, so this was the first beer that worked, hence the name, Look Mom, I Did It. Because nice, uh, the first beer that didn't work, didn't work. And mm. um, don't look, Mom, I didn't do it. You know, so <laughs> I, I, uh, I was very happy how this one turned out and hence the name. So it's got a nice oh. color to it. Oh, yeah. Tells me that's good. Mm. Look, mom, he did it. Yeah. Try to find that. Tickles the senses mm-hmm. on six point two. Ah, so it's a little higher than yeah, the higher. a little bit higher than the other stuff Sweet. we've had. Nugget Pacific Gem Crystal Citra Citra hops. All that good stuff and crisp and crushable. Mm-hmm. I'm just reading the description straight off the TV. Yeah, off the fake website, which is my TV hooked up to a flash drive that plays a jpeg menu so i do what you gotta (laughs) do man this is tasty man i'm i'm digging it Mm -hmm. it's a little bitter of course i always say that with ipas i feel like (laughs) it's just a little bit bitter (laughs) i don't get it but uh there's a nice roundness to it Mm. citra doesn't come through no Uh, i know you like citra citra is kind of like the you know, there's there's a, f- a few hops to, you know, kind of what what I lay homage to where I started in IPAs and it's drinking like single hop this, single hop that. And so you mm. kind of learn to understand the flavors of hops and, and citra is one of those that can work well either way. Either you can you can throw it in as a base, mm-hmm. you know, so that it can kind of work well with others, you know, Living Waters where they do the Highgate series. They use citra as kind of like the base mm-hmm. and then they experiment with other hops or citra can be used as kind of an additional flavor because it's just high enough on the on the um the alpha acid unit scale where you can kind of add it in and kind of add some little bit of sharpness Interesting. which is kind of where i'm getting on that but this is this is it's easy to drink 6.2 mm-hmm. um 6.2 is not super high in alcohol, but at the same time, 6.2s are normally taste heavier than this this is clean this is super it's really clean. easy to drink and refreshing this could this could get you in trouble because you could be hot outside while you're at the pool and you're drinking yeah. it, and then before you know it, you're three in and probably a little wasted. This is one of those uh, crispy boys I've heard about. Crispy <laughs> boys. I think I know why the crystal doesn't come through. Okay, it's because there's no crystal in it. <laughs> I scratched out on my brew sheet because I was out, so I did mosaic instead of crystal. Ah. So your palate is correct, my mosaic, friend, mosaic. and my okay. little menu up there is wrong. I just I must have read my recipe and not my actual brew sheet when I put it up there and I forgot. But yeah, I was supposed to do 80 ounce of crystal and citra in the whirlpool and it ended up being mosaic, mosaic. instead. Mm-hmm. Okay. So good uh I like it though. It's really tasty. That I did, wasn't the intention. Yeah. I was just, no, you know. I did do crystal in the dry hop. 
mm-hmm. um, 80 ounce in the dry hop of crystal, but in the, in the, where you're going to get more of your bitter flavor from is stuff when it's actually hot, you mm-hmm. know, like in the boil or yep. even in the whirlpool, a little less so, but, um, dry hop is where the crystals were. So you, I don't know. Again, I, that's a good thing to do is like experiment with tasting single hop and like really learning those profiles and mm. being able to pick them out. That's, that's impressive. That mosaic, uh, when you said mosaic, it clicked for me. Um, so, uh, when I, when Nashville's IPA scene was rapidly popping with like bearded iris, Southern mm-hmm. grist and whatnot, roadmap was a, a beer from bearded iris that came out that really just latched on to me. Mm-hmm. And it had a Citra African Queen Mosaic. Mosaic, okay. And this tastes like Roadmap without the haze. <clears throat> so I'm going to feel better after drinking this one. And gotcha. It's not as heavy. Okay. But I get all the flavors that I liked out of it. So, <laughs> And Homestyle, of course, it's Homestyle is extremely, uh, it's really juicy. But Homestyle, is, it's all Mosaic as yeah, well. That's true. So yeah, being able right. to, if we were to take, if you were to take all the juiciness out of Homestyle, you kind of get a little bit of, of what's on the back end here. But those mosaic hops, man, those are that's something to play around with. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I like this one. I do have a question for you, though. Mm. Why Big Trouble Brewing Company? We've been sitting here the whole time and we've oh, been talking. Well, but like, I mean, when you're here, you know why. I obviously know why, <laughs> but I mean, it had to have started from something yes, like the yes. idea had on, to have come okay. from somewhere. I was in Afghanistan and... I was, uh, you don't really have phones there, but we did have some computers that had internet and the, there was like a secure internet for like business for mm-hmm. lack of better words. And then there's a non-secured internet. So one's called Sipper, one's Nipper. Nipper is non-secured internet protocol, something. Mm. So on Nipper, you can get on Facebook and on Facebook, you can talk to your family. So I was telling my wife, like we were talking about want, you know, doing the brewery and I was like, I need to think of a name. And I actually think it was her suggestion mm. um, as a joke. And um, I was like, that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> and so, because it is it is an homage to the film mm-hmm. with Big Trouble in Little China, which <clears throat> is, if you haven't seen it, shut this off. Go watch <laughs> it. Go, go watch first, it. It's yes. a John Carpenter yeah. film. Uh, yeah. I think it's in 86. Kurt Russell stars in it. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just a stupid adventure, fantasy, oh, yeah. horror, comedy. It's got everything. It's how movies in the 80s were. And like all the effects are like, this is pre, I mean, it's not pre computers, but it's essentially pre computers. And uh, all the effects are like legit. I don't mm-hmm. know. It's just, it's a lot of fun to watch. The story's crazy. It's just a fun movie. Mm-hmm. And yes. if you like that whole era, like Ghostbusters, just everything mm-hmm. in that yeah. time frame, those movies, to me, the 80s decade of film. Everything from like Ghostbusters to Terminator, mm-hmm. Back to the Future, Spaceballs, and everything Baseball, Mel Brooks oh, yes. has ever thought about. <laughs> yeah. They're just fun and amazing in different ways than like these modern blockbusters, which are so highly produced. And I don't know. It's not a film podcast. Sorry. But no, named I, after I, the I film it. partially, but mm-hmm. um, it's also kind of a pun, mm-hmm. like Big Trouble Brewing. Like there, there's a phrase, there's trouble brewing or troubles brewing. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you kind of go either way. You can play on that, right? Yeah. So, and I knew if I if I can't pull this off, I'll be in big trouble because I, <laughs> uh, like I said earlier, kind of just went all in on it. Mm-hmm. Um, so kind of several meetings there, but in general, yeah, it's an homage to the film. I don't say it's named after, I don't want to get sued no, um, yeah, yeah. for using their, the goodwill and effort that they use 20th century Fox and making such an amazing film, <laughs> but big trouble brewing is, is a phrase or trouble brewing is a phrase. I just right, added uh, the word big. So definitely yeah, can't yeah. sue me. It's all nope. yours. <laughs> I'm the janitor and the lawyer here. So <laughs> the janitor and the lawyer. I am the janitor. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I uh, wear multiple hats. <laughs> and sometimes he brews beer. Yeah. That's right. I have a joke that like um if I'm in the back, I'll be like, Oh yeah, that's the front of house manager's job. Like he'll be in when the brewer leaves, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. That's when you go back and you go, Yeah, it's foot over, over, over the top. Hat. Yeah, flip yeah, the, over the, the top around yeah. and I become somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> Another good film. <laughs> Speaking of, like I got I have five, six posters here that I got mm. framed. They're all 80s movies, kind of like B-side uh, art of 80s movies. Like one's a European Big Trouble poster. One's Vigo the Carpathian from Ghostbusters 2. Mm. He's the, it's the painting that comes alive in the film. There's a radio, radio show of Empire Strikes Back, which is the most amazing poster I've ever seen. Awesome colors. I've never seen Star Wars do color on their text before. But something about that, That's I just a good couldn't point. pass I've it up. I've never seen it either. Mm-hmm. It's always been single color, yeah. right? Yep. 
And then I got a German blood sport and a German escape from New York. So I wanted to do just like not the standard art on them. Um, but when I was looking at posters, I had like 40 in my cart, like my eBay mm -hmm. cart. Cause like everything, I was like, Oh, aliens. Oh, space. But like, Oh, like there's so many there's so awesome many posters and awesome movies. Was <laughs> but my years, cart was man. like, it was like thousands of dollars <laughs> yeah. in pre-framed, you know, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I got to whittle this down. But, yeah. uh, there was just so many to choose from. I love the forced perspective on the blood sport one you got. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's just judging you no matter where That's you are. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta love Von Dom, man. He, uh -huh. It's a great, great film. Another one. Kumite. Yeah. Just love yes. it. 80s were a good year for fi for they a good was. decade for films. I don't... Uh, there weren't 90s. too many bad ones. No. I mean, they well, were all bad, but they were, bad, they were all really good. It was means they're good. Yeah. But, I mean, ni 90s had awesome. some good stuff, too. And then... I don't know. I mean... Things I, changed after We the start Matrix. to sound like old men, though, oh, like yeah. pining <laughs> about the past. But you can't... I mean, it's true. Like mm -hmm. if I don't know, there's something about it, man. There was some magic that was captured in L in like Hollywood in yes. that decade. People were just having these crazy ideas. They're getting funded and making these movies, <laughs> yeah. and they just work. Eighties, eighties was all how much ass can you kick, right? And how <laughs> yeah. many bad guys with you know terrible sound effects and long scenes and, and unlimited like clips. That. Unlimited, yeah. Nineties, yeah. nineties <laughs> was kind of a little bit of a more like feel good era where it was like comedy and feel good. Beethoven, and then, like, Home Alone, right? Stuff exactly, like that. yeah. And then like in ninety nine, the Matrix came around and it was like, oh, bullet time technology. Yeah. What if we're not real? What if do that and i feel like <laughs> after that everything just kind of changed course like it went from from family style movies for like half of it and the other half was like lethal weapon or lethal uh, weapon you know the original terminator yeah. and stuff like that and now all of a sudden we're thinking too much in movies when we're watching yeah it. it's just like, like you're watching inception for the fourth time or yeah. shutter island you're and like you still wait, don't understand have they always it. been there or yeah. like <laughs> you am i, am I dreaming in the 80s my brother's like have you seen tenant the new christopher uh, newish christopher nolan movie and i was yeah. like I was like, no. He's like, dude, I've watched it four times. It's awesome because I still don't understand. I'm like, bro, like I don't have time to watch something four times, like no. much less one time yeah. right now. Yeah, like can't do it. That's killer. But, Man, IPA was great. Yes, yes, I really like it. Good. I'm glad you guys like. I actually I did an event here in town last weekend. Uh, Prince of Palooza was a little. There's a pizzeria here, and they did a little block party, and I brought a keg of that and a keg of seltzer. Mm. Uh, six barrel keg, not, okay. not the huge ones. Yeah, but sold sold the entire keg worth of uh, the IPA and pints, and got some good feedback. Good, you know, a lot of people liked it, and I was I was stoked because again, it was the yes. the first one to go from grain to glass <clears throat> that I was like, okay, I can I can mm. sell this one, you know. So there's got to be some pride in that when that happens when you hear people say, hey, your beer is really good. I like it. I like the taste of it. Like because you work hard for yeah. it. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's surreal, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like it's still nothing has sunk in yet. I'm just in like crisis mode with mm. cortisol flowing through my veins 24 seven because <laughs> there's always some alligator close to the boat that I'm like, yeah, ah, like what's <laughs> okay. Like tomorrow I have this, so okay, today I need to do this so the building doesn't burn down or whatever it is. Like mm -hmm. it's just there hasn't really been a lot of time to reflect yet. Um, one day, surely that'll happen one day. But uh, <laughs> when do when people are like, you know, they come and they actually like the beer. Mm -hmm. And I can tell they're not just like faking it. Yeah. I'm like, that's awesome. Like, Sweet, I, I do appreciate it a lot because, like you said, yeah, it's a lot of work. Um, mm -hmm. And even if, you know, you're just a, I happen to be the brewery owner as well as the brewer. But even if I was just brewing, like, it's, it's work. Like the guys at Anheuser Busch make it like it's still work, you know, yeah, like yeah. it's, uh, stuff can go wrong and stuff leaks and things don't, Murphy's laws and full effects and just stuff happens and you're trying to like make the best product you can with what you have given the circumstances. And, uh, it's, it's always, it's fun. I love brewing. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Unfortunately, this building heats up quite a bit. <laughs> and in the summer, like I brewed last week, what I make, I think I made maybe that, or I don't remember, but mm. we, no, to, it was during the soft opening. And I brewed, and then like by the time people were showing up, it was like eighty degrees Ooh, in here. Oh man! Because the kettle, I have a gas-fired kettle, and you got to let that thing—it's on for at least an hour during the boil, and uh, then at least an hour to get it up to boil. Yeah. So you're just pumping out a hundred thousand BTUs a second on a uninsulated kettle where heat's just radiating from, and I mean the AC's 
works and it's on, but it just oh, can't it's compete. 90 degrees outside too. Right? Yeah. So yeah. in the winter, it'll be great. Yeah. Because yeah. I won't have to pay. You don't have to pay the electric. But right now, the HVAC is fighting the kettle. But in the winter, they can at least work together and be friends. Yeah. So we got that to look forward to. <laughs> Slightly lower HVAC bill. Uh, just brew a lot in the winter and mm. keep it all cold until the summer. That's what I should go. do. If only I had the room. <laughs> well, I guess uh, we're going to try one of these seltzers. Yeah. All right. Go with the seltzer. Let's see here. There's a Ooh. I Dream of Blue Raspberry and the uh, Seltzer Blanco. Sure, like a real tell. Ask for a splash of fruit flavoring. I want to go with the blue raspberry seltzer. All right. So yeah, I'll do a public service announcement. So we do a Brita seltzer, and it's uh, essentially it's not flavored, so mm. it's just the blank seltzer. Mm, okay. And um, all the fruit flavors we're trying to add on the back end with uh, syrups. So people, I have like lemon, lime, tangerine, watermelon, blue raspberry, coconut, uh, and some others, but. So people can put in whatever they want. We just thought it'd be like a fun way. So a, you don't have to brew seven different batches and keg seven different batches mm. to have different flavors. And people can just try. You're not limited new stuff. to stuff. Yeah. Only those flavors. So it's just a way to, you flavor it on the back end. Um, and it actually, I'll let you guys be the judge, but it's, it's almost like a hard Sprite is the way mm. I describe the seltzer. It's got a little more, in my opinion, much more mouthfeel than like a, I'm not saying good or bad, but like a white claw or a truly, it's a different animal, but technically it's a seltzer. It's, you know, sugar water and yeah. yeast. Nice. And then uh, way easier than brewing beer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I Like if people want to buy seltzers, I'll love it because it's so much less cleanup. It's yeah. it's amazing. Like there's no hops or troop <laughs> or like grain to uh, shovel out. Like yeah. it's just like you just add everything to the boil. There's no mashing. So I was actually... I had a lot of fun. It was a short day. I was like, oh, I could get used to this. Just be a seltzery. But all right, let me pour these and we'll see. <laughs> seltzer. wonder if those exist. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I like, like it though. Yeah, seltzery. I feel like there's one of those places in Asheville, mm, North Carolina. Sure. If there, if it was going to be anywhere, it would be in Asheville, North Carolina. A seltzer. But I never, I never thought about it. Is there a place that just does seltzers? I know there's, there's quite a few of the bigger breweries, you know, that are kind of um, betting the farm on seltzers and some of them are working out. Okay. You know, some of them are not. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'd be very curious to see. I'm also very curious to see, he mentioned kind of a sugary sweet taste yeah. with seltzers. It's just carbonated water with a little bit of what you think is going to be the fruit flavor. And then it just disappears. You don't get any of the sweetness that comes with say a blueberry or something like that. So am I expecting that here today? I guess I'll find out. I think you'll find out I'll hopefully find out. in a few seconds. But yeah, yeah it's I, I use the word mouthfeel and I use the metaphor hard sprite mm. because it's more like a soda than your white claw or your uh, ah. truly types. Yeah. Like those to me are like much more crisp and like <laughs> super. I don't know. I don't know what it is about them, but it's they're really refreshing and like crisp. But this is more mellow. <laughs> Um, went down the wrong way though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wrong hole. It went down. That's super left. interesting. Yeah, I dig the the seltzer by itself. It's it yeah. I want to let you guys sweetness. try it, and then um, I've been dosing like two. I like the small. The, sorry, I didn't mean to. Oh, good. No, go ahead. I like the slight sweetness in there. Yeah, it's really good. Easy to drink. You can just drink that by itself. I know, and I I, I think I prefer it that way personally. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But I mean, like I said, the main substrate in there that the yeast is act like in beer. The yeast is acting on sugar extracted from grain, right? Mm -hmm. And in this, we're not extracting sugar from grain. We just have sugar. It's like dextrose. So it's just, it's the same yeast I'm using for the ales. And the only difference is it's just <clears throat> sugar in the water. So, yeah. and then you carve it up. And I don't know. I mean, it sounds, I don't like to give away the secret. There is really no secret. <laughs> it's, it is what it is. But uh, like, they're fun to make. They're fun to drink. And... They're fun to flavor too. So Man. I think I might get one of those beer slushy machines and try to make Ooh, that like a seltzer great. slushy yeah. just with the ice like rotates or whatever. Extra and then people dope. add their flavors. Yeah, in I think that'd want. be kind of fun, you know. Um, but I've been doing like two pumps in a pint. So for a four ounce, I guess just like a tiny pump. I don't really know. <laughs> uh, so we'll have to figure it out. Because I'm using know? by pumps, I mean for the flavors, they come in these like, <clears throat> I don't know, 25 ounce 
bottles with a little pumper on top. Yeah. Really large. So it's easy. So you get about expensive. an ounce every time you do it. And but for like a flight, still haven't really figured out. You never know what you're yeah. getting in terms of like, oh, because it's it's already kind of sweet and mm -hmm. you don't want to like crush it with too much sweetness. Yeah. All right. You, it would be annoying to have to get little milliliter droppers for yeah, little pipettes or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you can All right. give it a shot with uh I got those, I got some other flavors, but again, the base is the base, and these are just kind of like a topping on your snow cone. Nice. Literally. I think that would be a wonderful thing with the seltzer. I'll try some. I feel like that, that could be an experiment in of itself. Like you just oh. you just serve the seltzer and that's it. Let people now obviously people are washing hands, I'm sure, being saying safe, but you know, you give them the opportunity to put as much flavor in it as they want yeah. or whatever. It's on them if they screw it up. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I like too. You. Like, well, you can't yeah. say it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I missed my first shot, but I yeah, one kind of one of each really does the work. I like yeah, the coconut awesome. and the blueberry together. That's tasty. Yeah. Yeah, we did we did a trial and error day of just mixing stuff and trying to find like what's what's fun. Like we we might make some this is gonna be a fancy word, but proprietary, like just like Ooh. not say what's in it, but like <laughs> give it a name like Tiger's Blood or like yeah. something or like the the blood sport seltzer and like it's gonna would obviously awesome. it'd be something red and yes. uh and let people guess <laughs> tiger's blood something tiger's to have fun blood. with <laughs> yeah. that's but, too uh but yeah so i got seven well six and a half barrels of this which is like i don't know about 200 gallons left um <clears throat> but people been like i wanted to make something that non-beer drinkers would still not just be forced to come here with their boyfriend or girlfriend or husband right. or wife and have to watch you drink a beer and like, can we go? Can we go? So true. So at least they have something uh, to try. Yeah. And if they like it, great. If not, then well, man, get a beer. So <laughs> the coconut, definitely. I, I'm already a fan of coconut anyway. That's that syrup knocked it right into place. Mm. And then the touch of the blue raspberry. Yeah, man, this is a uh, got Easy some good drink, stuff. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's fun. It's uh, I'm like glad it's, it, I'm glad it's sweeter because mm. most seltzers are just dry carbonated water with again the illusion that you're going to get some sort of like you don't get the sugary aspect yeah. of a fruit when you get out well, yeah, and those are marketed seltzer. for like crossfitters and like yeah. health people they're all obsessed yeah. with seltzers and they're right. gluten-free and all that but uh which i get i mean hey each their own yeah but um do you guys remember a few years ago there was like uh not your dad's root beer yeah and like all that stuff came out maybe i don't know 15 or 16 those were <clears> big for a while I don't do much shopping anymore, so I don't know if they're still around or not. Absolutely. But it's kind of, to me, it's more of a alcoholic soda is mm -hmm. really what it reminds me of. Yeah. And it's not, it's, I think it's 4.2. Yep. You yeah. It. So it's, it's not like crazy, but, um, pretty good on a hot day. I would think, you know, if you're outside and for damn sure, if only I had them in cans <laughs> for people, but you can get a growl or a seltzer and bring it home. Uh huh. <laughs> Man. Yeah. I would totally get this in like a, even a crowler. Yeah. <laughs> and I just drink the whole crowler. I'm not sharing. <laughs> yeah. Crowlers are single serve, man. Those that's are, right. <laughs> it's two beers, basically. Right? Yeah. 16 yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. that's one serving. Yeah. A crowler is one serving. Man. That was awesome. We, yeah, we took the tour here. Yeah. And I've got one. Um, we can do it on air, off air, or not at all. But it's a pale ale. It's still in the tank right now. So it's mm. fer oh, it's done fermenting. It's just being dry hopped. So that takes a few days. It's on, I think, day two or three. I got to check my notes, but um, it's not quite. I think tomorrow I'm going to move it over to a tank and carb mm -hmm. it. <clears throat> and hopefully it'll be carved up enough to serve tomorrow. Definitely by Thursday it will. But uh, we can try that one too. I sure. can go just That'd be great. pour some tasters. That. Yeah. You have to, the caveat is though, it's not it's 39 not degrees. Right? And it's, yeah. Um, it's not carbonated and it won't be quite as cold as these, but mm -hmm. just... That's keep fine. that in mind you know? yeah i really enjoy being able to taste the you know before the final product because mm -hmm. uh it, for me not being a brewer <clears throat> or part of a brewery working and stuff it's like a good uh, i guess perspective like into the process right so uh i can't wait um yeah. I, we had it was a saison at uh, a tenfold? Uh, tenfold. I think yeah. it was the Marzen. Was it the Mar the October? Uh, it was the Marzen. Yeah, yeah, it was the Marzen. I think it was coming out later in September, September twenty yeah. first or September twenty so fourth, something like that. Yeah. But we did have a chance. I was wondering if you were gonna bring that up because 
that was another one of those experiences where it was like, you know, I think he was further along in the process than what we're about to experience right now. Right. At this point, it was just in the tanks. He's waiting for it to kind of, he used the term, it was too sharp. Yeah. He was kind of yeah. trying to round out the edges. And I have no idea what the <laughs> hell that means because it tasted really damn good to me. It's It was already really close. Yeah. So <clears throat> I'm sure. Look at that. Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> It reminds me some some bar used little uh, I f- I forget what those are called again, but they use the little beakers as their <clears throat> shot glasses. I forget who it was. I think it's in town somewhere, Nashville based. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just as a nerd. <laughs> yeah. Well, it it threw me off whenever I saw it. I was like, what the? <laughs> yeah. I'll drink it, I guess. So it's just like a beaker. Yeah, it was just a miniature beaker. Oh, okay. Not like a tall like yard uh, that you get yeah. from the Ren Faire beaker, but yeah. It, it was weird, but... Oh, that feels cool enough. Yeah. I was yeah, expecting it to be like warm, like warm. mid-40s right now. No, it's that's fine. Down. Yeah. yeah. So what do we... Tell us again what we're working with here. Uh, Give me a second. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not ready yet, apparently, according to Josiah. Yeah, it's still... I, I'm, I'm blanking on... Oh, needs a couple me. more. He said he needs. He was going to try to move it over into the carbonation tank. That's tomorrow. right. That's right. So this will be a non-carby. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. Yeah. Hopefully Ooh. he said this one. Hopefully he'll be ready tomorrow. By the time, like, since from the day we're recording, anyway. Yeah. I'll have to come back and try it. Yeah, man. Damn, we got to come back and drink more beer. Bummer. <sighs> Tough yeah, job you guys have. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh It's a pale ale. Um, the grain bill is mostly two row. Uh, it's probably 80% of it. And there's Maris Otter, Crystal, mm. 45, and Dextrin, and a little bit of wheat. Mm. Um, the boil hops, a mere two ounce of nugget um, at 60 minutes, 76 ounce of citra in the Whirlpool. Uh, so a good chunk in the yeah, Whirlpool. A bunch of hops, and then yeah. dry hops was uh, 20, 40, 20 ounces of Crystal, Mosaic, and Cascade. Ooh. So... It's dry hopping now. I think, like I said, I added them uh, 822. So, and today is, is two days 24. ago. 24. Yeah. So, probably give it at least another day. Uh, yeah. So, it, uh, I don't know. It's not done yet. So, I'm kind of, I've only had like this much, as much as we're having right now, a little four mm. ounce when I'm testing the gravity, but I've well, liked it so far. Cheers, then. Yeah. Oh. That's going to be, I mean, that's going to gonna be really tasty when it's carbonated. You can tell. It's got a good flavor already. Yeah. Mm. Just sell it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who needs carbonation? Yeah. Yeah. The monks didn't, I guess. So. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to this one. Good flavor for a pale. Yes. Very good flavor for a pale. I've actually never done this process before. I've never actually, <clears throat> obviously, other than like my homebrew days when, um, you know, I'm trying to experience and not necessarily non cart course. <clears throat> the only time I've really had a non carbonated beer in my homebrew days was when like the bottle, I was, I'd bottle condition everything, yeah. right? Wasn't fancy enough to keg anything. So like the top didn't necessarily stay on as right. So it basically mm. was supposed to carbonate for those two weeks and it just basically stayed flat. You pop ah. open the top and you didn't hear any like nothing. Yeah, that always sucks. <laughs> but um, <laughs> other than that, I've never actually tried a beer that is just about ready but hasn't yet been carbonated mm-hmm. so for me it's an interesting experience because i get to drink this beer without any of the noise of what it's of, of the carbonation itself oh, yeah. because that does add a lot to a beer even though there's no flavor the bubbles and everything like that this you get to focus on just the flavor mm-hmm. of the beer and i've never done that before this is cool mm. yeah thank you for sharing yeah, yeah no problem um you got a name picked out for it I don't. Um, uh, I usually name them as I'm typing them on the menu five minutes before we open. It's like, oh, crap. Uh, uh, that's kind of funny. All right, put it down. Yeah. <laughs> so that's been my process so far. Method acting. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and. <laughs> yes, and. Yes, <laughs> and. Uh, no, I don't have a name yet. Um, mm. I think it'll come to me. Yes. You have your inspirations right at that opportunity it yes. sounds like yes mm-hmm. there's no uh necessity is the mother of invention that's right that's for sure that's a quote yeah <laughs> man yeah i dig it I, uh, some carbonation yeah, I be good 
dude mm-hmm. like so so that's uh that's the last one in the tank right now which will put me up to six on tap hopefully you know god willing tomorrow yeah um and then i just ordered grain for a stout and another Ooh. ipa um i was gonna make the same ipa but i might make a different one i don't know uh, right. i'm still trying to figure it out but i think the stout's the next one i'm gonna brew <clears throat> uh maybe tomorrow morning so mm-hmm. i want to but i need to I need to keg off that brown so I can move this beer that we're trying now into yeah. a tank. But selfishly, I just want like brewing's more fun. I just want to do that. Like <laughs> filling kegs isn't necessarily fun. You just gotta right. watch liquid transfer for a while and yeah. pray for the best. But brewing beer uh, is fun, but it doesn't pay the bills. You gotta sell it at some point too. <laughs> yeah, right? you gotta true. do the non fun. Well, part yeah, yeah. It. If I can't, I can't move this pail until I empty out one of those tanks. So yep. I gotta. That's really first on. That's the alligator closest to the boat that mm-hmm. needs to go away. And then I think I can do that today. We'll see. Then the next alligator. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. They just keep coming, man. Yeah. They just keep (laughs) coming. Slow down. Well, we we brought one special beer. Yes. So I'll go ahead and uh, call this our rinse break. Yeah, we'll take a quick rinse break. And we're back. Yes. The different part of the set of the uh, the episode. Yes, uh, we've got something here from uh, Living Waters. It's a light lawnmower beer called Dyson Sphere, ten point one ABV. It is a blended barrel aged stout. <laughs> yeah. So what we typically like to do with this section, we've done this quite a few times, is you know Josiah. Every single time we get to come and experience um, beer we've never had before. So you get to put in your, your hard effort, labor and and work and things like that so that we can enjoy it. You know, this is kind of our way of saying thanks for having us in today. And thanks for letting us come and enjoy, um, really good beer. Cause every single one of these brews have been out of this world. Like they've been really good today. So as a thank you gift, what we like to do is bring something that, you know, we keep back kind of something that we wouldn't just pop open a day by ourselves. And mm-hmm. we like to share it with people. Um, so that's kind of where we got to mm-hmm. where we are today. This is this is Dyson Sphere uh, Construct One. Um, this is a ten percent, ten point one percent Russian Imperial Stout, forty IBUs, uh, blended barrel aged Imperial Stout, um, and three unique casks. Uh, aged for fifteen months in Willet Rye, sixteen months in Four Roses, uh, fourteen months in Russell's Reserve. Uh, and then blended to perfection. And I'm just reading from the, the website. Swirls of creme brulee, peanut butter, s'mores, vanilla, sticky wow. bread pudding, tantalizing the taste buds with every sip. Goodness. That's a lot. It's that, quite the intro, man. That's a lot going on. <laughs> that's uh, Sounds heavy. Man, Living Waters this, from Nashville. This beer is like older than my kids. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> When you put it that way, damn! <laughs> <laughs> I gotta give props uh, to Living Waters. I uh, I was telling you guys off the mics, but mm-hmm. Ryan, I I know Ryan and a couple other guys there, but uh, they've been a great help to me. Uh, he and I did some training at the same place in Colorado, and we're on a forum together online for guys who have done that little program. And he's very active on there and very helpful, answering my stupid questions all the time. And I'll just text <laughs> him on the side and like send him a picture, like what is wrong with this? Or why is this thing not working? And he's always quick to give me an answer. So not only does do they make great beer, but uh, good dude in real life. So yeah, he is. And we, this bottle, this art, I feel like I'm like looking at a video game, like icon, <laughs> like you're choosing your loadout or something. I don't know. It just looks like <laughs> super, their marketing is awesome. Man. Yeah. This stuff yeah. looks They've got legit. a very unique style yeah. of, of bottling all of their, I know all of their bottles that we've picked up from them, they're always kind of like that charcoal black yeah. bottle. The artwork has always been just one or two colors, mm-hmm. not a not a ton of art. Some of them have been very simple and basic. Others have been like this Dyson Sphere is a little bit more complicated. Yeah. Uh, but this one's got the wax top on top and you which, saw it. Which for- took a minute to open. <laughs> it, thick. Yeah, it was a <laughs> thick boy. That's right. <laughs> This uh yeah the, the artwork makes me think of the old schmups of the eighties kind of like with the spaceships and stuff <laughs> yeah it it's rad um a little more less pixel already more complicated to mm-hmm. me but yeah I I dig it and uh, let's dig in mm. sweet nose yeah wow. really sweet There's oh a, yeah it's ten point one man there's a lot going on with this beer. Well, <laughs> that is imperial for yeah. sure. Shakes you to the roots there. Good lawnmower beer, right, man? Very good lawnmower <laughs> beer. Yeah. 
some light to cool down with. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Josiah, what's this is kind of an opportunity where we're always interested in. You know, we've spent the last hour or so talking about everything from opening to, you know, sometimes you have a plan for things, other times that you have a plan and things just don't go your way. And a lot of times things you're just flying by the seat of your pants. But yep. is there, it seems kind of like when we've been talking, that the aspect that I enjoyed the most is, you know, today I think I want to try brewing this and mm. I want to try brewing that. And then, you know, based on what it's like and what the energy feels like and how I'm feeling, this will be the name for it or whatever. So understanding that a lot of this, especially in the beginning phases, is just kind of like, like you said, just trying to keep up, you know, yeah. fighting the alligator until the next one comes in. Is there something that's in the back of your mind that you have planned down the road? Are you, have you been able to get to that point where you're like, I eventually want to do something like this or I want to do this? Or is it just right now, I'm just flying by the seat of my pants until I can get by? Um, I mean, right now, yeah, it's been triage mode for yeah. a while, just like. Cause there's, there's the brewing stuff again. And I'm not, I'm not complaining. Trust me. Like I'm this, everything is a blessing. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm grateful every day I have a chance to do this and it's fun and I enjoy it. Um, however, there, there's just a lot of like unforeseen crap that pops up, whether it, you know, like one of the chairs, like the little plastic thing that the chair sits on mm -hmm. falls off and it's like, so it's going to scratch the floor. Like, okay, should I glue this on epoxy? Just let it go. Put a tennis ball. Like just like, just that's just <laughs> yeah. some minor example or, uh, and like, it's just, that's one chair. And then you've got like reaching coolers, walking coolers. You got the beer, grain orders, nitrogen gas, just everything like coming in every day. It's just multi-spectral domains that you have to contend with on an on the fly basis. Mm -hmm. And that stuff hasn't really leveled out yet because yeah. we're so new. Um, so really, it's just like a day to day That's existence. Fair. Yeah, uh, That's at, fair. At soft opening point. only at this point, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, but in the future, like you're talking about, like beers or programs, I'd like to just just know? beers in general. Like, is there something yeah. a desire that you that you want to brew that you haven't yeah, been able to get um, to? Or something I definitely like want to. I feel like such a basic uh, human <laughs> saying this, but like. I'm not embarrassed that I like hazies, but I am because yeah. everybody loves hazies. They're kind of sure. a craze, but dude, I love a good hazy, man. Definitely. And I would like to make a hazy that is at least enjoyable for people that they could get one here. So that's on, I'm doing a stout next. I don't remember if I've said that already or not on the mic, but I got grain in for a stout and another IPA. Um, so I may haze that one up. I'm not sure. I mean, it's kind of getting late in the year, but it's hot is hell in Tennessee until like Halloween. So right. there's plenty <laughs> yeah. of time. I love a good hazy man. I, mm -hmm. I can't say that enough. So I'm a little scared to make one, but what could, what could go wrong? You know, you right. never know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Um, and eventually once, once I get stuff rolling, I can fill these taps mm -hmm. up and I know what people in Gallatin and Sumner County like, like, mm -hmm. uh, cause I mean, this isn't just like a little ego passion project where I just make whatever, Josiah wants to make because mm. um, I like it. And it's, mm. I mean, I'm making a seltzer for God's sake, you know, right, like it's, right. I'm, I, my goal is to just get people to come in and have a good time, have mm -hmm. a beer, talk, hang out, like let off some steam. And so I'm not just going to pump out my classic playlist of just whatever <laughs> I want. Uh, but I do a stouts on the horizon. It's just probably going to be pretty basic stout. I'm not going to like, this one's awesome. Um, it's got a lot going on, which, lot but going. it also takes a lot of time. Like yeah. those guys, I mean, they're what switching casks oh, yeah, three 15, times, 16 months. So time yeah, like, um, while. right now, I mean, that takes some foresight and some planning and I'm, <laughs> I'm just not there You're right not there now yet. in my frame of mind. Yeah. Like, where would I put those barrels? You know, like, mm. uh, just who am I getting the barrels from? How are they getting, like, I just start thinking of all those things like, okay we'll just skip the barrel age for now. We'll just go straight to regular stout. And then, yes. you know, in the future I'd love, to, there's nothing I wouldn't want to try or do, you know what right. I mean? Like I'm, I'm open to any style, any, any aging process, like sours, hazies, stouts, you know, add as many adjectives as you want. And like, I'm down, man. It's just, um, but right now it's just like, just Keep fill this head above first. Water. So yeah, it's, I haven't really honestly even thought about that. Like at the very <laughs> beginning, before I really started putting, well, when I was putting pencil to paper, but not like muscle to drywall, I had all these ideas and stuff and practicality at some point just intervenes and has a very it's loud good. vote. And it's just like, <laughs> dude, just get your head out of the clouds and just like execute, you know? So yes. I've just been in execute mode for a long time 
and I honestly need to get out of that mode. I've been very internally focused on like just getting crap to work, but like even like Facebook and Instagram, like I probably mm-hmm. need to get pumping more stuff out there, spreading the word. Like, I don't know. There's a, there's a big list of stuff. There's a lot to now do. Now that I'm, the internals are starting to balance out a little bit. It's like, okay, let's, let's look outward and try to fork, you know, just get better with the planning and stuff. But yeah. to answer your question, uh, every, everything and nothing. So yeah. like sky's the limit, but, um, I honestly haven't Not right had now. headspace there to be no, like, that's- well, here's well, the next thing, you know. Well, hey, big trouble's brewing in the future. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch with the puns. No, that that's fair. Uh, you know, we're 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 sitting here in a brewery that that officially opens next week. Uh, yesterday. Yesterday. Why do I keep saying that? Well, there's been some soft opens. There's been whatnot. a. There's yeah, been soft it's open. been a moving target. But this is not the years. first time I've made that mistake, whether it's on the <laughs> or off the air today. I make mistakes like every minute, like, yeah. so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, like you know, official grand opening yesterday. Mm-hmm. You know, officially been in business one day. You know, soft opening for the last couple of weeks yeah. or what and whatnot. So it's it's fair to say, you know, right now it's you don't want to call it damage control because you're not. I don't. Just talking to you today, I don't feel like you're in damage control. Like you, I, if you act as if you have your your shit together, you know, and you're just a good and, actor. And you're well. <laughs> sometimes that's half the battle, yeah. right? You know, hey. there's there's hell going on behind the scenes, but at the end of the day, people want to come in just drink a good beer, and that's what we had the opportunity to do today. Mm-hmm. We just came in, and you know, we said you know hey there's a guy that knows what he's doing he looks like he has his act together let's see if we can sit down and drink beers with him today Worked. josiah's like what the hell is this guy <laughs> talking about i don't have my shit together yet man but you make you, good you, shit man thanks i appreciate that a lot it means a lot coming from you guys yeah. and um i'm very glad you guys hit me up um i was a little nervous i've listened to a couple of your podcasts i was like man these guys like dissecting these beers man. i'm like i, don't, I no, barely know what's in them you know like uh but it's just beer. But, uh, it's a good time. It's just drinking beer. That's all yeah, it is. That's, that's why, well, like I said earlier, I mean, it's a glorified lemonade stand, you know, like yes. Elon, Ra- Elon Musk ascended rockets to the moon, landed them back on earth. <laughs> I'm just trying to sell sugar water with some yeast at a storefront. You're yeah. like, this, this can't be that hard. <laughs> right. Yeah. I keep telling myself that, like, just do it. Like, come on. Uh, but <laughs> no, it is, man. Beer is, beer is great. People love it. Brings people together. It's fun to drink. Uh, it's just a great culture in general mm-hmm. uh, as it, whether you're making it or consuming it, talking about it, distributing it. Like it's just, it's a good community. It and I, I've been, had the pleasure of learning that firsthand this last couple of years. So just people are like, like Ryan, like Brad from buyer scratch or Nate from half batch mm-hmm. in Hendersonville, just helpful. Like what anything I need or some dumb question I have, like, my pressure relief valve just kicked off. Is this going to shut off on its own? Or like, what, you know, just (laughs) stuff you don't know going from homebrew to bigger scale and just having a network to float ideas or like just rein you back in when you're out in the weeds. It's been awesome. And so, especially in Nashville, I mean, I think we got a great, great thing going in, well, greater Nashville, I'll say, because I'm not in Nashville, but you know what I mean? Greater Like it's a, it's just a good community, man. And I'm, I'm stoked to uh, have a small part in it here in my little island in Gallatin and uh it's fun it's awesome here man I I love the space I love the beer I'm gonna be back very soon Mm -hmm. yeah you're close I am yeah well yeah (laughs) Yeah. close-ish I'm not close but I'm also gonna be back very soon yes I feel like so you were kind of in the back and and trying to grab something to open this lawnmower beer here that we're drinking and (laughs) Mitch and I were running through just the list of like what were the favorites, you know, out of the ones. And I, I surprisingly for me, the red ale, I think, was mm-hmm. was my favorite. They were all amazing good beers. I could literally drink a whole pint of every single one of them and mm-hmm. and probably go back and drink another. The red ale for me, for whatever reason, just hit the spot. And it could have been that it was just it's hot outside and it was my first beer of the day and I was just yeah. kinda like you know, whatever. But the wait, that was your first came. beer of the day. <laughs> Fair officially, one p.m. Of, officially, the first beer of your the wife day. listens to this, doesn't she? Yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I got you. Yes, my wife, who I love very much. <laughs> for my, for me, it, it's a. I really dig the red, and I really love that blood orange blonde ale because I'm not a big blonde ale guy, but yeah. that brought me into the into the vein for sure. Yeah. Cool. So, That's what. We yeah. The surprises are, are what's awesome. You know, you go in, I'm an IPA guy. Yeah. When, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm really anxious to try the IPA or I can't wait to try the IPA. 
but then it's like, oh, let's start with the red ale. And I go, holy shit, this is actually like really killer. This is really good. So it's that surprise factor also yeah. that plays a part in it. Yeah, it's good, man. I'm, I'm glad you liked it. I've been getting really good feedback on the red, which <laughs> surprised me. I was just like, well, this is an executable style. Like, I know I can make a decent red. Uh, but again, the scale thing, first time, every, everything's a first time oh, here. Yeah. So it's like, here we go. But a lot of people have been really enjoying that one, which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. I mean, they enjoy it. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just glad that people can come here and drink the beer that I'm making. And it's, it's, it's fun. You know, mm. I love sharing it. And most of the feedback is, I'm, I'm, I think all of it has been good, honestly. Like awesome. usually people that they listen to their mom, they didn't have something nice to say. They don't say anything. Right. So yeah. when people do say something and they don't know that I'm necessarily making it, they'll just come in and I'll be working the bar or whatever. Mm-hmm. And Oh yeah, that, this is good, and I'm like, yes, you know, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm trying to stay off uh, the comments on oh, Facebook goodness. or Instagram. I just, I don't want to. Don't look at Untapped. Yeah, no. <laughs> I know. Some guy, some guy, he came in the other night. And he's like, "You're on Untapped now." I got them all on Untapped. I'm oh, like, "Oh man," I'm like, "Dude, yeah." yeah. Welcome to the next I'll, chapter. Yeah, yeah I know. I don't even have an account on Untapped. I'm just like, uh, oh, goodness. Yeah, yeah. I'll let you guys have that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having us. It's been a great time. Yeah, I think it's. I think we had a really good time. Um, definitely, we'll be back. Uh, Big Trouble Brewing Company, two thirteen West Main Street, Gallatin, Tennessee. Come check them out if you haven't been here before. If you like drinking beer, keep drinking beer. If you haven't, if you're not drinking beer, start drinking beer. And if you've never had craft beer before, Big Trouble Brewing definitely has a lot of different selections for people for the experience palette all the way down to the novices. So definitely get out here, check them out. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Get some of that seltzer. It's good. Yeah. Cheers.